tactiles, making himself aware of both similarities and differences, becoming more open and accepting in the process. Syllabus. What do we do? Mingle. Why is he going to sit alone? Guess he wants us on our own. You think this is a zoo or some freak show? No, I, d I didn't think of it that way. I wanted my class to have the experience of... Of what? The natives and their natural habitat? I'm sorry, you're right. I didn't think of it that way. Well, you're not as dumb as those flyboys. Can I get you a drink? No, I, uh, I don't drink, and I've got to go. <laughs> Do you uh, get extra credits for black awareness and uh, gay pride? <laughs> Sergeant Langford, what's your job here at Langley? I'm a counselor in the area of equal opportunity and training. How long have you known Sergeant Matlovich? A year and a half, two years. What's your opinion of him as an instructor? The best. Uh, Sergeant, what was your reaction when you learned he was a homosexual? Well, uh, the thought came to me. I, I mean, it was a surprise, but uh, I had no ill feeling about it. We're very good friends. What effect do you think his image now will have on his ability as an instructor? None. I've seen him in action. Hey, hey. Yeah, it's mine. The class of race relations? You tell me. Huh? All white people stink. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Okay, this course is in race relations. I'm your instructor, Technical Sergeant Matlovich. It's my job to shake you up, force you to take a look at some of your feelings prejudices. Seems I've made a fair start with you, Sergeant. I don't stink. Neither do most white people I know. Okay. Lots of exceptions. Ever heard anybody beside me say something like that? Sure, Sergeant. Plenty of whites say the same thing about brothers. <laughs> yeah, all black people stink. Does that suit you better, Sergeant? These two words. When you hear either one of them starting a flat-out statement, get your guard up. All white people stink. All black people are lazy. They are money grabbers. They can't be trusted. Let me label you 
and I can stop thinking about you as a separate person. It's a lot easier to hate them than to try to understand him. Sergeant Langford, do you feel that Sergeant Matlovich's effectiveness in the classroom would be impaired? No, sir, I do not. What about on an individual basis, say, a one-to-one? -one? Drug counseling, for instance. I think he can do just as good a job as he's ever done. Maybe better. But the fact that Sergeant Matlovich is violating a law that would render him exposed to five years in prison and a dishonorable discharge in any way affect your evaluation of him as your leader? Not in my opinion, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. You don't fool me, man. You come on so patient, so understanding. Trying to make me think you care what happens to me. Don't look at me like that. I know inside you think I'm garbage. You hate me. Why don't you start yelling at people you hate me? With your dad? With your mom? With your wife who walked out on you? You hate me, you hate me. Go on, tell me how much you hate me. It's a really lousy come on, Diego. You're disgusting, Diego. You know why? Because you're dead. You're dead for no reason, except that you don't have the guts to look at who you are and what you are. So you keep your head fouled up with dope. I don't know who I am, what I am. Neither do you. But I do know one thing, you're not as bad as you think you are. Now come on, man, why don't you give yourself a break? I got the weirdest feeling, man. Like, you've been down where I've been. But you hate yourself so much, you can only make it by proving how much everybody else hates you. You've been down there, man. But like you said, you had the guts to face who you are, what you are. You had the guts, man. How ashamed I am of my behavior. The things that disgust me, I can't accept. When you are ready, you will take it. Father? 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 You don't have the guts to look at who you are and what you are. What you are. I'm ashamed. It's disgusting. The things that disgust me, I can't accept. Who you are and what you are. There's something else. There's nothing else. There's something else. There's something I'm else. ashamed. When you are ready, you will tell me. You will tell me. You will tell me. You will tell me. Father? It's disgusting. Father? It's disgusting. Disgusting. Father? Who you are and what you are. What you are. Father? What you are. Father? 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 Bring it in, Father Beller. The priest. Father Beller. Lenny? 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 
Hey. Hey, my man. It sounded so tense on the phone. What's up? Well, I had to talk to you. Well, it must be important. What is it? Well, it's something I gotta tell you. Well, tell me. You look like you're about to jump off a cliff. Yeah, I am. Well, what does that mean? It means that there's something that I gotta tell you that I have not told anybody else, that I have not been able to tell anybody else, that I have not trusted myself or anybody else enough to tell. Look, Jason, I'm gay. What? I'm gay. I'm homosexual. Yeah. That time in the bar with those two girls, I thought maybe. But I put it out of my mind. I tried to deny it to myself, to others, but I feel like I'm going to explode. Well, why are you telling me? Well, who, who else can I tell, Jason? You're my best friend. I mean, I haven't got anyone else to tell. Well, don't lay it on me, because I don't want to hear it. I wish you hadn't told him. Well, what does it change? I don't know. But I wish you hadn't told me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to reject you. I'm sorry, man. It wasn't your fault. It was my fault. I'm sorry. Listen, we'll get you some help, okay? I guess I felt as if I'd lost my best friend. And that the one person that I could have told... Uh, wouldn't have turned on me. He was a priest in Vietnam. He was killed. Why didn't you pull the trigger? 
I love life and work. And I'm afraid of death. So obviously then the wish for death wasn't as strong as the will to live, hmm? And your being here is an affirmation of that fact, isn't it? But it's curious. I think the reason why I kept going back to the Nam was because I was trying to test myself or kill myself. Do you know that if a person can feel a, a sense of loss for something that he's never had? Oh, certainly. I mean, we can despair over parts of ourselves that we feel have never had a chance to grow or to develop and have never been nurtured. Like plants in the dark. I think that was the worst part of it. Feeling shut up. I think I know why they call it coming out of the closet, because you have to come out or you suffocate. You feel better now? I'm beginning to. <sighs> Good. Would you like to come back and talk some more? Sure. Tomorrow? That would be great. <laughs> I was on the staff of the Institute for Sex Research, co-authored the Kinsey Reports, and I'm now in private practice. During your career, Doctor, you've dealt extensively with the subject of homosexuality. Oh, yes, of course. Can you tell us what is a homosexual? <laughs> it's a very difficult question because there are so many different kinds of homosexuals and homosexual lifestyles. Some men have a long-time monogamous relationship with other men for 10, 20, 30 years. Some men are only interested in one-night stands. that I'm a race relations instructor. Hey, I'll introduce you to Art uh, Stinson. He's instructor at the university. Hey, Art. Meet Leonard Matlevich. He's a fellow partner in the social sciences racket. You teach? I'm uh, an instructor in the Air Force race relations program. I've heard those classes are pretty subversive. Well, the brass uh, says the program's important, but not really important. How are you doing with Fran? Terrific. And I see her three times a week. I wish I could see her three times a week. Problem is, she still treats me like a little kid. Well, maybe if you had terrific dreams like I had, she'd think you were more interested. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Problem is, I always have the same dream. She's always blonde. Yeah. Was your mother blonde? <laughs> hey, cut that out! You're really getting into that stuff, aren't you? No, man, it's good, it's good. How are you doing? I was thinking about going to college, using my GI Bill. You know what's really funny? What? Well, I never thought about going to college if it hadn't been for you. Me? Yeah, you kind of opened my head up. Your attitude about people and learning about things. All I ever cared about was basketball and women. Well, man, you were there when I needed you most. <laughs> oh, come on, we're buddies. I'll race to the bar. Okay, loser man. pays. You're on. You're not going to laugh at me. No. Yeah, you're not going to. 
I'm glad you called, because I think it's been, what, about six months since I saw you last. Well, I've been traveling, working hard. Mm -hmm, and didn't need me anymore. Well, I felt that you'd given me enough time. Excuses, excuses. Besides, I love postcards from exotic places. I have not seen one exotic Air Force base yet, except <laughs> in the movies. So, why'd you call? Well, since you're the one of the most important people in my life, I wanted to tell you about the most important decision I've ever made. I'm very flattered. I've decided to challenge the Air Force. What do you mean? I've decided to reveal myself as homosexual and fight to stay in. Oh, Leonard, why do you want to do that? They tell me what a great race relations instructor I am. They keep writing great evaluations on my record, all because I'm teaching equality. Yeah. And then I keep hearing cracks about faggots and fairies. Well, I want my equality. I want to be me in the Air Force. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Do you think there's any chance of your winning? Well, I don't see why not. Greater changes have taken place. As a classroom instructor, Sergeant Matlovich could become a role model for younger airmen. What's the probability, Doctor, of heterosexuals relating to this famous homosexual and trying to emulate him. A person who is 17, 18, or 19 years old uh, has a pretty well-set lifestyle. Sergeant Matlovich might be a leader and someone to look up to, but that doesn't mean they're going to follow him into homosexuality. If they know he's a homosexual and they still respect him, like him, and are led by him, I think this can be a very broadening experience, breaking down all the stereotypes. Thank you, Dr. Pomeroy. No questions at this time. No questions from the board? Uh, no, none. It's getting late. This board is recessed until 08, 30 hours tomorrow. Oh, uh, Mr. Adelston, how many witnesses has the respondent yet to call? Only one, Your Honor. Sergeant Matlovich. Most of the men in the Air Force think you're sick. What if they refuse to serve with you? That's their problem. That's their privilege. How can you do your job if no one will associate with you? I don't think that will happen. Dave, do we have to go on with this? You have to be ready for the heaviest kind of attack, Matt. I can handle it. Sergeant Matlovich, suppose you're assigned to an isolated base, say Alaska. Nobody there but men. Given your sexual preferences, what do you do? I would have no problem. That's like putting a heterosexual man in a harem. I don't see any difference. Five, six months? Side by side, sharing the same shower? That's their problem as much as mine. What about the abuse, the contempt the men are going to dump on? Sign on the shower door, no faggots allowed. Matlovich, this means you. Get out of the Air Force, you flaming queen, or we'll give you a free sex change. What'll that do to your discipline? What happens to Air Force morale? Let's get some rest. I can handle it. Dad. Hello, Sonny. I didn't expect you. <laughs> I thought you'd never come home. I walked around the block six times. How'd you get here? I took a bus. Sit down, sit down. I didn't mean how'd you get here. I meant uh, it's a long trip. Can I get you something to drink? Oh, no, no, no. I, uh... I stopped at a soda fountain. <laughs> it reminded me of the PX in England. Remember the PX in England? Uh, seemed like so long ago. Yeah, it's like yesterday. Yeah, it does to me, too.
Are you sure I can't get you something to eat? Or... No, it's okay. work with my hands. Always like to work with my hands. Maybe it's because words don't come so easy to me. But I I want to say something to you. Now, maybe I failed you somewhere. No, Dad. But no, don't, don't. Don't drop. Maybe I didn't say the right things to you when you were growing up. I don't know. I, I can't pretend to understand you now. Why didn't you come and tell me yourself? Why did I have to read about it in the paper? Friends, neighbors, call, ask me. Couldn't be your son, could it? Why didn't you come and, and tell me yourself? I was afraid. Afraid? I was afraid that, that you'd be angry, that you wouldn't want to see me again. I was afraid you wouldn't love me. How could I not love you? I might not be able to understand you, but I couldn't stop loving you. Well, I was wrong. I'm sorry. You know what hurt me? What? That you didn't trust me. You didn't trust me enough. That I'd love you anyway. I'm sorry. Two years, I know the system. You don't have a chance of beating it. But you keep trying. You know, I don't know if I'm up to the right thing with my life. I know I'm doing the right thing now. What you're doing made me question my life. Made me question myself. Did I waste it? at you now, and I, I know I didn't waste it. So win or lose, I'm with you. I'm with you because I love you. I love you too, sir. When did you first admit to yourself you were gay? When I was 30 years old. So you said, I'm Lenny Matlovich, I'm gay. What'd you do about it? I cried a lot. I prayed, change me, I don't want to be like this, make me like everybody else. Finally, I realized there was no changing to be made. I had to live with who I am and what I am. I had to live with myself as a human being. Now, Matt, why did you write the letter, government exhibit number three, that started all of this? 